Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel once again. Today I have my March reading wrap-up video, which is heavily dominated once again by horror. I uh, basically only read horror novels this month once again. I think next month I'm going to switch it up a little bit, get into some science fiction, because uh, I have been on a horror kick for quite a while now. Uh, so this month I read six novels, six horror novels that uh, all ended up being pretty good. We got a bit of a mixed bag, uh, some well-known authors, some debut, no a one debut novel, and a classic as well. So, all right, six novels coming your way. Let's get right into it. All right, so first up, and the most recent novel, the one I just finished, is Midnight's Lair by Richard Lehman. Uh, my third Richard Lehman novel that I've read, and I'm three for three right now. I just can't seem to put these books down. Once I pick him up, I find he is such an easy author to read. Uh, he just keeps, he, he keeps you into the whole thing. I, I find I just can't put them down. I just breeze right through these things. I read this in a day. Uh, just like the last one that I read, which was, um, I did read Funland. That was my first one. And uh, and then I also read one more. Um, I, oh, yeah, The Island, which, uh, which was crazy. Uh, but this one was just as good. Um, I thought it read kind of like The Island, uh, where it all like kind of took place in one sequence of events. Uh, once again, uh, there was a very pervy character, which seems to be a common trend with Richard Lehman's novels. Uh, it didn't dominate the plot like it did in, in The Island, uh, but it was just a kind of a secondary character that was once again a bit of a pervert. Uh, overall, this book, it follows a tour guide who runs a, uh, a tour of some caves which are below a resort uh, on the East Coast, I believe. And basically what happens is once they're down there in the middle of a tour, the power goes out. And the only way in and out of this cave is through elevators. So once the power's out, they had no lights. They had, uh, they had no way of getting out. Um, and they're stuck down there, this tour guide. So it follows the group down stuck in the caves. And it also follows the parents, a couple parents of, some, of a couple of the girls that are stuck down below with what's going on up top. And... There is a bit of a darker uh, undertones to this novel based on the reasoning why they're stuck in the cave. Uh, basically, the owner and his son are, like I said, they're, uh, they're perverts and they're kind of messed up people. And uh, they end up biting a little too much off, more than they can chew. And, you know, some guy ends up coming in looking for his uh, fiance or wife or whichever it was that had gone missing due to these two individuals and he ends up messing the place up pretty good uh so in a nutshell that's basically the plot and then we follow um you know the parents as well as the tour guide down below trying to get everyone out of the caves i'm not going to give away much more than that there is a little more to it there's a little bit of a darker side to it about what goes on down in the caves so i'm not going to give anything away in that regard but overall this was a great read um, like I said, I'm three for three when it comes to Richard Lehman, and I'm definitely going to keep going down uh, this road because uh, I find him a very entertaining author to read. Next up, another outstanding novel, John Avid Linkvist once again, Let the Right One In. Uh, this is the third Linkvist novel that I've read, and I'm kind of glad I didn't start with this one because, as everyone has told me, this is his best. And... It was really good. It did not disappoint. Again, another author that I find just really easy to read. I get through his books really quickly. Um, just such a joy. I find him his his the way he writes is very is beautiful in a way. If I could if I could use that word to describe it, he is just <laughs> uh, he's very unique. I I find I just love the way he he spins his his stories, how they, they really make you think. It's, it's very not, it's, it's not very cut and dry, um, like a lot of mainstream stuff. Uh, so Let the Right One In follows a vampire of sorts, uh, and she's this, this girl who looks like she's 15 years old or however, however old she was. And, uh, she basically befriends a, another, uh, boy her age in her apartment complex. And, um, and he, he ends up falling in love with her and you know there there's a lot more to this story 
in terms of you know her survival and everything like that and you know how she has to it's it's very graphic it's a bit of a gory novel in terms of how she has to drink blood and how she has to you know use people and farm their blood in order to survive and things like that but it was one of those things where she wasn't exactly an evil person she was just doing what she needed to do to survive and you know that came at the cost of some innocent lives because she had to drink blood um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, I, I don't want to give too much away on this one because it is a great read and, and you know, I, I really think you should go in fresh with this one. Um, once again, Linkfist, uh, I really do uh, love this author. I, I hope they, they translate more of his stuff back to English so I can check him out. So sticking with the Dracula, or sorry, the vampire theme, I ended up going to Bram Stoker's Dracula next. Uh, the classic that started it all for the vampire genre, I guess you could say. Uh, this one is a bit of a tougher read to get through because of how old it is and, you know, the old English style. But overall, it is good. I, I really, I, I would put it maybe a little bit below Frankenstein. I, I thought Frankenstein was one of the better classics that I read, but I'd probably put it maybe... I'm trying to think of what else would compare to it. Maybe above Turn of the Screw, but I, I mean Turn of the Screw might be a bit of a stretch in terms of, in terms of comparing the two. Uh, but overall, it's a it's a fabulous story. It definitely is interesting if you are a fan of the vampire genre, just to to kind of get back to the basics here and and just really know where it all stems from. Um, that's kind of my interest in it. Uh, so yeah, anytime when it comes with the classics, that's kind of how uh, how I view it going in is is it's just super interesting to find out where um, the horror genre began and and it's always interesting to read something as old as this that's written in I believe the late 1800s. Um, so yeah, I mean age old story. Everybody knows the story. This uh, this gives it a bit of a different twist. Um, it's fun how the characters kind of break down uh, the vampire. And what it is but they're experiencing it for the first time so any modern vampire stories it's like you're always playing off those everybody it's common knowledge to everybody about the tropes of the garlic and the steak and you know inviting them in and can't go out in daylight uh, the interesting thing was in this one Dracula could go out in the daylight it's just he couldn't use his supernatural powers unless it was dark outside so it's not like he'd go up in flames if uh, if he was exposed to the sun which was kind of cool and that's kind of a trope that um doesn't get put into any modern day vampire stories they're always um you know if they go out in the sun they're gonna die uh so that was interesting to me but like i said um it was cool how the characters they they were experiencing and researching this phenomenon of what the a vampire was and and you know kind of um, making up their own rules and having to figure everything out on the fly, uh, which was different to, to modern day uh, vampire stories, like I said, because it's always common knowledge, all the all the tropes and all the weaknesses and everything like that. So um, once again, if you're into the classics and you haven't read this one, check it out. All right, next up is Hell House by Richard Matheson. My first Richard Matheson read, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, definitely a very good haunted house story if if that's your thing. Uh, put it up there with Haunting of Hill House. I'd even say um, this was a little bit better than Hill House um, just because Hill House was very tame in terms of how haunted the house was. I'm, I'm not even sure if the house was actually even haunted in Hill House um, to tell you the truth, but I may be missing the boat on that one. Um, this one, this house definitely was haunted. It was pretty crazy. A uh, little bit of a twist ending, which was which was kind of cool. Uh, really quickly, it follows four individuals who are exploring um, uh, Hell House, which is a mansion that had had some previous uh, previous explorations that went awry. I guess um, there was a couple. There was one in like the 30s, and then one in the 40s that everyone ended up dying in, except for one individual, and that individual ends up going back. Uh, 30 years later because I believe this takes place in the 70s uh, so yeah they're basically exploring the house there's a uh, the, there's a woman who is a basically like a priest or, or, or something along those lines and um, she's view she's um, exploring it from the from the religious side of it 
Um, then you've got the gentleman who is a, a, a medium, a psychic, who was the survivor of the last expedition 30 years before. Um, so he's um, exploring it from the, you know, parapsychological, I guess, point of view. And then you've got this uh, scientist who's trying to basically exploit the whole thing, saying ghosts aren't real and, you know, paranormal occurrences have, have you know, logical explanations and he's going to prove it. And he's going to basically exercise the the energies that are causing all these disturbances in the house with this uh, machine that he built, this newfound technology. Um, and his wife comes along for the ride with him. So those are like the three points of view um, that everyone's trying to do their part to clean this house up of all the um, paranormal and um, ghosts and everything like that. Uh, so it follows them all. They all basically go insane. The house drives them insane. And and um, we go from there and, you know, a lot of crazy stuff happens. So uh, if you're into hauntings, if you're into paranormal and things like that, check this book out. Yeah, it's a pretty good read. All right, next up was A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. This was Sean Hamill's debut novel. Uh, really good read. This one was super entertaining. I got through it pretty quick. Um, I thought this one read, if you've read any Grady Hendrix, I thought this one read like a Grady Hendrix novel, just the vibe I got. Um, it seems to be maybe a common thing with any new age horror, uh, because Grady Hendrix is a rather new author and this is Sean Hamill's debut novel, like I said. Uh, also this was basically a love letter to H.P. Lovecraft. A lot of Lovecraft references. If you've read Lovecraft's work, you will enjoy this because like I said, there are a lot of references to a lot of his past works. Um, and basically, you know, it, it, the entire premise was like a, a, a Lovecraft story, um, cosmic horror, if you want to put it that way. Uh, it follows a family uh, through different generations, and basically they're all being followed or um, visited by this monster, I guess you could say. Um, but it's, it's, it's very weird. I mean, I already told you this is a love, uh, love letter to Lovecraft. So, um, you would know that it has to be a little bit weird, kind of hard to explain. Uh, but yeah, there's like a monster that keeps visiting them. And then eventually the son, um, ends up befriending the monster in a very weird way. And there's like this alternate world that the monster can like bring him to, um, so yeah, there's, there's that involved as well. And, um, yeah, it basically just follows the trials and tribulations of this family as they navigate through life. But, uh, you know, some are in denial of this monster and the supernatural events that are happening to the family and everything like that. Um, probably a terrible explanation by myself, but it's really the best I could do. Cause like I said, it was pretty confusing and it's pretty hard to just sum up. Uh, but it was a good read if you're into that sort of cosmic horror or, um, you know, that, that very different style of, uh, of horror. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. All right. And lastly, we had a sci-fi horror, which was Parasite by Darcy Coates. Uh, my first Darcy Coates read, I did do a little bit of research on Darcy Coates after I read this book. Uh, apparently it was, oh, well, I didn't do enough research to know it was if it's a, a female or a male, but apparently he or she uh, writes a lot of haunting paranormal uh, books as well. Um, this one was a sci-fi horror, which I'm definitely into. This one, uh, if I could sum it up, think of, if you've seen the movie The Thing, but basically that, but in space. So it's like this parasite, this which is a, a life form in itself, inhabits... Um, the human body like will take over your body and it was basically exactly like the thing where it would look like you but it, you wouldn't know so you didn't know who to trust you didn't know who was infected you couldn't trust anybody um, so that was pretty cool there's a lot of different parts to this book it kind of reads as like four different like short stories with different characters in each story but they all kind of um, chronologically progress so it starts with like the infestation on one moon and then, um, you know, the next story is about, you know, them finding out about that. And it's something happened on a different moon and it basically spreading through the human race, which had colonized different moons and different planets uh, way into the future. So in a nutshell, that's basically what it is. Um, Sci-fi horror, if you're into that, 
Uh, if you like movies like The Thing or, or even Alien or, or anything like that, you'll definitely like this one. So um, yeah, if you're a sci-fi horror fan, check this one out. All right, guys, thanks for watching my video. Once again, if you made it this far, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. If you're into this sort of content, if you love reading books, uh, hit, hit, us, hit the subscribe button down below and we'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye.